Is your borrowing capacity as an Australian expat going to change over the next one to two years? Now, many Australian expats, if you've been to a bank or tried to buy a home lately, will have noticed that a lot of Australian banks are significantly reducing the amount of money you can borrow. So what is this going to look like over the next 6, 12, 18, 24 months? And what are going to be the key factors that are going to influence our borrowing capacity? Let's dive in. Hi there, I'm Jared Brown, Australian expat financial planner based here in Singapore, working with Australians to master their money and of course, plan ahead for their overall wealth and their retirement. So in this video, we're having a look at what are the key factors that can influence your borrowing capacity with banks and lenders down in Australia. Now, number one is the serviceability buffer rate. Now, this is the rate at which banks are instructed by the regulator, by the overseeing bodies in Australia to ensure you can meet your repayments at above and beyond the rate that they're actually offering. Now, this serviceability buffer has been 2.5% and it's currently 3%. Now, what this means is that if the bank's rate that you're going to repay the loan at is let's say 6.19% or 6% for argument's sake, the bank needs to ensure that you can meet the repayments at a rate of 9%. That is 6% plus the serviceability buffer. Now that was increased by the regulator in Australia not that long ago in an effort to cool borrowing, to reduce borrowing, and of course to reduce future financial stress. And that has had a significant impact on the amount of money that you can borrow. Now, eventually the assumption is that will eventually be reduced and borrowing capacities will increase again. Now there is no definitive talk on exactly when that will take place, but certainly an important one to watch we don't expect it's going to remain at this high level forevermore. Now, number two is foreign exchange rates. Again, as Australian expats, we're all regularly watching exactly what the Aussie dollar is going to do and is doing at any one time. And as we'd all be aware, the Australian dollar relatively recently has been quite weak. But expectations are across banks, across most FX analysts, that the Australian dollar will strengthen going forward. It's very likely that the Federal Reserve in the US and a number of other central banks will cut rates faster and more aggressively than the Reserve Bank of Australia. Now that could mean that the Australian dollar strengthens quite significantly against other currencies. So if you're an Australian expat living working in Singapore or Hong Kong or the US for example, and the Australian dollar strengthens, that is going to impact both your foreign income when converted to Australian dollars and of course, your expenses. But what's interesting is it's going to impact your expenses more than it impacts your income. Because when you submit your income to the bank, they will often apply a foreign exchange shading or buffer to your income and may impose tax rates at Australian rates or the rate of tax you pay in your country residence, depending on the lender. But the expenses themselves are taken at 100%. If you spend $5,000 of Singapore dollars in rent every month and the exchange rate is 1.2 to 1, then your expense in Australian dollars is 6,000 Australian dollars. So again, if that FX rate does change, be mindful that it could both increase or decrease your borrowing capacity going forward. And of course, number three is the general decrease in the cash rate by the Reserve Bank of Australia. Roughly speaking, every 1% reduction in the RBA cash rate in Australia will mean that borrowing capacity increases by around 10%. Now, of course, that is not a hard and fast rule for everyone, important to run your own numbers, but it gives us a rough guide for how much our borrowing capacity could increase going forward. So there you have it, three common variables or three key variables rather that could impact your borrowing capacity going forward and your overall property plans whether you're looking to buy your own home or you're looking to refinance a property or even buy your next investment property. So I hope that gives you a bit of clarity on the key variables that will impact your borrowing capacity going forward. But drop me a note with any questions you've got. Do remember to like, subscribe to the channel. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.